Hi, in this video I want to talk about the WireGuard VPN and I actually want to use it to set up my own VPN server. Now, when you want to use a VPN, you usually have two options, right? I mean, you can either use one of those VPN service providers which they have their own VPN servers in many countries. This option though, unfortunately, is not usually free and you gotta pay like monthly or yearly subscription fees. Or you can set up your own VPN server even at home and as long as you have the right hardware, this is gonna be free. I mean, no subscription would be necessary and that's what we're gonna do in this video. Now, for the VPN server, I'm going to use an ASUS RTAX86U wireless router. ASUS wireless routers usually come with many features, including a VPN server, and the support for the WireGuard has recently been added to the firmware. It's not like every ASUS wireless router supports it though, at least not right now, but there is a link in the video description that would show you what models are supported and so on and so forth. So definitely check it out if you are interested. When we are setting up a VPN server, we know that there are different VPN protocols to choose from. For example, WireGuard is one of them. There are different VPN scenarios that we can implement as well. For example, a site-to-site -site VPN or a client VPN. So in this video, we're going to use WireGuard in a client VPN configuration, where there is a VPN server and some clients that would remotely connect to the server through a VPN connection. Hopefully in other videos we get to talk about other VPN scenarios as well. Now let's quickly see what this WireGuard is all about. WireGuard is an open source VPN protocol which is rather new in the VPN world. It is focused on being simple, easy to use, fast and at the same time secure which is good. Here's for example some benchmarks from their website. This shows that it can outperform IPsec and OpenVPN in throughput and ping tests which is very interesting. Now it only uses UDP and not TCP and the default port number is 51820. And UDP is faster than TCP because it doesn't need a handshake between the clients and the server. Basically it is connectionless. WireGuard also has less code compared to some other VPN protocols which means it is lightweight which again means it is beneficial not only for the devices that are involved but for the people that are involved as well. I mean it is less process intensive let's say for the server and the client machines and also it is much easier for the engineers to find any bugs or any potential vulnerabilities. Now, before doing anything, I'll make sure I have installed the WireGuard software or app on all the client devices. They're going to use that to connect to the VPN server. And as you can see, it is available for all kinds of operating systems. Now, when the server is configured, then I can either import that configuration file and use it here to connect, or if the client device is a smartphone, I can also import that configuration by scanning a QR code. We will get to that later. Now let's set up the server. So when I log into the router, I should go to the VPN section and under the VPN server tab, click on the WireGuard VPN. Now as far as details, we have general settings and advanced settings. First, let's take a look at the general settings. If I want to use the VPN tunnel to also be able to access my local network resources aka intranet, then I should enable this feature. Otherwise, I won't be able to access my local network resources remotely and the VPN tunnel will be used only to reroute my internet connection. This is where I should specify the IP address for the VPN interface of the server. The wireless router has different interfaces, for example LAN and WAN and they have their own IP addresses. This one though is going to be used for the VPN tunnel. So I can use IPv4, IPv6 or maybe both of them for the VPN tunnel. I'm just going to use the default one which happened to be an IPv4. So if I use this default address, then the VPN server will be 10.6.0.1, the first client will be 10.6.0.2, and the second client will be 10.6.0.3, and so on and so forth. This is the default UDP port that WireGuard uses. I can change it to something else if I need to. For example, if I realize this port number for whatever reason is blocked on the client side, I can use a different port number. The thing though is that I cannot use a TCP port. 
Here is where I can add the VPN clients. But before I do that, let's take a look at the advanced settings first, and then we'll come back here again. If I enable the allow DNS option, then it will also advertise the IP address of the VPN server as the DNS server for the clients. You can see that in the configuration file as well. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to make sure it is enabled. This one, as it says, will enable NAT for IPv6. So the clients need to be NAT to the public IP address of the server so they can have internet access through the VPN tunnel. I can guess it is automatically enabled for IPv4, which is what we are using in this example. And this one, if we were to use IPv6, could also enable it for that. Pre-shared key is an optional and extra security feature and I'm going to make sure it is enabled. It is also going to show up in the configuration file. The persistent keep alive is just a keep alive packet which by default here is going to be sent out every 25 seconds to the peers to make sure they are still connected and I'm not going to change it. Each peer in WireGuard has a public key and a private key. This pair of keys is actually called an asymmetric key pair, which is used to uniquely identify the peers as well as encrypting the communication between the peers. For example, these are the keys for this peer which happen to be the server. Now let's add a VPN client and see if we can connect. As you can see, it is telling me that I can add up to 10 clients. I'm not sure if this number would be any different in a different wireless router, but 10 should be enough for us as home internet users. Here I can give a name to this particular VPN client. This one is just for testing and I'm going to name it test number one. The more settings would make much more sense if I were to create a site-to-site -site VPN and it is something that hopefully we can talk about in another video. So here is where I should find the QR code that I talked about before. I can scan the QR code on my phone which should add the tunnel for me and then I can connect. I can also export the configuration file, send it to the client, import it over there which should do the same thing. The interesting thing is that the connection process is surprisingly fast. So fast that sometimes I even doubt if it is really connected. Of course, one way just to double check to make sure it is connected is by checking the public IP address of the client before and after the connection. Because after it is connected, the IP address should change to the IP address of the server. And I can easily check that by just googling what is my IP. Now just keep in mind that in this video I used an ASUS wireless router for the VPN server because first of all that is my main wireless router here at home. Also now that it is supporting the WireGuard in its graphical user interface doing it as we saw is just so easy. But if I have a different wireless router which doesn't natively allow me to install the WireGuard I might still be able to install it through a third party firmware such as the DDWRT or OpenWRT. Now let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and also if you think I should make more videos on VPN but maybe more interesting scenarios. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.